Welcome to another round of the Fight Friday Football Frenzy. Let it rain as the great oh, Eric Clapton sings. No matter, it's been another great night for high school football. Sure has. It didn't matter which part of the tri state you were in. There was rain and there was a decent game within a short drive. And if you lived near North Bend Road, you were close to a great game. A short bus ride to the Sanex Bombers at the Lancer Stadium. They'll smoke on the water as the Lancers Whoa. charged out of there tonight. Yeah. LaSalle shut down Moeller a week ago, but the Bombers cut right through the LaSalle defense on the first drive with plays like this. Matt Whitrock on the play action to Henry Fisher, and that is a big gainer. Then it's Whitrock giving the ball to Ronnie Fricky, and he bounces off the left side from the X, from the six, and the Bombers take a seven nothing lead. Wasn't always that easy, asked Ben Glines to say next. He's met by Ooh. Colty and Kearns and a slew of teammates for a big loss. So the rather means of scoring. Griffin Music breaks through the wall Ooh. and blocks this Ooh. LaSalle punt for a <laughs> touchdown. It's 14-0 for the Bombers, and you knew a kid named Raleigh would be pretty strong in the rain, probably in the snow, too. Steve Sun comes up with a pick, oh. and the Bombers ended up winning the game on a Mike Holman field goal with two seconds to go. Sanex wins 24-21. Got the athletic ability from his mom. Don't yeah, kid yourself. <laughs> Out to the great city of Lachlan for tonight's game between Elder and the team LaSalle beat a week ago. Moeller. First quarter elder with the ball, Peyton Ramsey, that son of a coach, rolling and finding Ross Hamilton. Good for 20 yards. More Ramsey, this time from the shotgun. He can't find a receiver, but he finds an open lane. Ramsey to the 14 before sliding out of bounds. The pit was feeling the rain tonight, but undaunted, Ramsey from the two with a shuffle pass to Garen Messmore around the left side of the line and into the land of six. Let's go to the second quarter. Muller on the march from the Elder 45. It's Matt Crable dropping back, then deciding to run up the right side of the field. The cutback and a nice run, but not good enough for the first down. So Muller elects to try the field goal 40 yards out. High and up, deep and up, good 7-3. Elder retains the lead. Now a minute to go before the half. It's Crable again, this time throwing deep to Thomas McVitie all the way down to the Elder 9. But the drive would stall. Muller would be forced to settle for another field goal. But, but, the Crusaders rebound from last week's loss with a 26-17 win over the Panthers. Muller's sterling nose rushed for 114 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Ken, you know what happened in Independence tonight? <laughs> it rained. It rained in most of the night as Simon Kenton took on Boone County. Dylan Powell had a big night for the Powell and Pioneers. He gets around the end here for the first down. And then on the very next play, he got the ball again, and he went 21 yards for the touchdown. He rushed 25 times for 148 yards tonight. No night off for the cheerleaders. They were counting off the points in the rain as well. It was uh, still uh, raining in the first quarter when Boone County drove the ball. Randall Douglas plows through the defense for a first down. Then Douglas with another run and another first down. But he would leave the game after that play with a leg injury. In comes Jerry Marshall for the Rebs. He goes the final yard. Boone County still in this game. Into the second quarter came Ron Rackey for the Pioneers. He connects with Jansen Harris on a 27-yard pass. Simon Kent goes on to win 27-21. Nobody's beaten the Pioneers yet. Let's go to Middletown. We're on Friday night. Fenwick took the field after honoring coaches and players from its illustrious past first quarter. Second possession, Fenwick senior running back Warren Kuzneski smashes some mouths and rumbles 11 yards. Same possession. Who are you going to give it to? Got to give it a big Warren. Falcons are soaring at this point. Still the first quarter. Purcell Marion with the ball down seven zip. Senior quarterback Mikel Jones gets popped. Ball comes out. Recovered by senior linebacker Connor Cottingen. And that's another touchdown for Fenwick. Purcell was never really settled in this game. Running right back the other way. It's a great effort, but this is the story of the night. Nothing comes of it. Fenwick at home wins big. 41 13 is the final. Now, in North College Hill tonight, it was as wet as anywhere in the Tri-State. And that caused a very tricky surface for the Trojans and Summit Country Day. And muddy, in fact, that wet field kept both teams from throwing the ball. North College Hill led 6-0 at the half. 
That pigskin was mighty slippery. Duke Tobin of the Knights almost lost this one, but it gets driven into the mud, and he's able to hold on to it. The kids had to get used to this rain. This snap flew over the head of North College Hill punter Justin Graver. That set up Summit with great field position on the Trojans' 16-yard line. Then Tobin dropped back and threw this one with confidence. T.J. Suggs brings it down between two defenders. They missed the point after, but this game was tied at six. North College Hill decided then put the ball in the air as well. Franklin Stewart sits Juwan Lindsay. He's able to turn the corner and head up the field. That's a huge game for the Trojans. They finish the drive with a run by Lindsay up the middle. And it's North College Hill who pulls off the upset, beating Summit Country Day tonight, 26 to 6. In a moment, we head out to our game of the week. Could Beachwood parlay its win over Cubcalf with another win tonight against Bellevue? And it was a big night in Liberty Township, and it was Tent City in Independence. That's the kind of night it was. Friday Football Frenzy is back after this.